this was the very last uh, panel uh, during the sixth Tallinn Digital Summit, but we're not uh, in the clear yet. Um, we're going to have a few concluding remarks on how we felt about today, what were the main conclusions that we could draw, and where are we going to go forward from this. So for this, please allow me to invite on stage the government CIO of Estonia, Mr. Lukas Ilves. <laughs> so uh, we started off this morning uh, with the production show. We had a slackliner uh, whose program had been written by AI. The music had been written by AI. The voiceover had been written by AI. And I made the point that while uh, AI brought to you the art um, or the formation of it, um, actually the presentation was brought to you by humans. So you can decide which of us is human, which of us is AI, who's directing the other. But um, I'm, I'm clearly not physically in the flesh. There's a hologram here somewhere. So this is what the Tallinn Digital Summit is all about. Uh, but all jokes aside, Lucas, uh, how do you feel about today? What did we learn? So one of, we had a dilemma when we were putting together the program, or I should say a fierce discussion in the organizing committee about whether we start the summit off with a panel on AI, um, which initially we were going to do. And I said, no because everything is going to be about AI. And I think that is something that we kind of have had rehearsed today, that AI isn't just another technology. There is something foundational to what's going on, because it's not about the technology. It's in the way that previous industrial revolutions were about bringing a, a new kind of contribution to the factors of production. It's now making computation, turning into cognition, an almost limitless factor of production, but with some buts that we'll talk about and some caveats. So, you know, I think one of the things we've learned is that, that AI is really in, uh, in everything that we're working on today. It's going to be with us in various forms for, for quite a while. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, probably many of us who were, were preparing for the presentations, they run their talking points through uh, some form of uh, ChatGPT or BART. I know I did. Uh, compose some of the ideas with the help of Google Bard. Uh, that's been very helpful in my day-to-day -day life. Um, but uh, I mean, we talk about being open and open to technology such as uh, AI or generative AI and so forth. What about being open at, at the same time, resilient and responsive? Can you do this? Yeah. Well, you're asking me to recap the prime minister's opening speech. <laughs> but, but basically, look, I mean, I think I want to come back to what you talked about in the morning, which I think we've kind of heard in various ways repeated throughout the day, which is, these three kind of lenses of viewing our technological challenges reinforce the idea that actually the DNA of how our open democratic societies function is not only compatible with, but builds upon the challenge of this current technological moment. Um, there's a lot of doom out there. There's a lot of pessimism. There are a lot of people really doubting whether um, 10, 20 years from now, liberal democracies are going to be in the same place that they are as societal models as economic models. And I think if we think through these three points, we, we get a reminder of what our strengths are. I mean, first of all, openness. You know, openness is really the operating system of how we work um, amongst ourselves. You know, whether we're talking about technological openness, you know, having open source solutions, um, having, you know, building, building products in a collaborative manner, whether we're talking about how we deal with problems and how, we, how our societies grapple with problems and uncertainty, it's precisely the fact that we don't know where the answer is coming from and we're ready for the unexpected input that I think we're stronger in dealing with you know, unforeseen circumstances. Um, the second bit, responsiveness, really builds on that, right? Because responsiveness is, okay, you're open. You have the information. That's already a big step. You know, you, you look at your classical large dictatorship and the dictator doesn't actually have very good information. So let's say now you've got the information you want from the openness. The next step is to be responsive, which is to actually build on that openness and to do something with the information. And this is a habit that governments are having to relearn in the digital age. Because, and it's not necessarily that we've gotten bad at it. It's that technology companies um, have gotten incredibly good at it. And indeed, more generally, consumer-focused any kind of companies have gotten really good at, at listening to and thinking about their consumers in the last couple of decades because of data, because of increased competition, and, and now because, of course, of automation that's giving them even more insights. And as governments, we have to take those same tools, but then put them to slightly different ends, right? Our end is not necessarily our margins. Our end, ultimately, is how we address those substantive underlying needs. Um, and then that brings us to resilience. 
Um, and resilience is, of course, how we, how we deal with challenges and how we deal with the unexpected. Um, and I think the point I want to make here is that openness and responsiveness both feed into resilience. Um, when we do the first two things well, we also make ourselves more resilient. Uh, and we see that in the way that open and responsive societies deal with all sorts of disaster recovery and adversity. And I think, you know, if, for the last year and a half, the kind of, the main drama of our world has been, you know, one of the dramas certainly in our part of the world has been how the world has re responded to the war in Ukraine. And I think it's been heartening to see, first of all, of course, Ukraine's own resilience, but also that I think some of the doubts that if you'd had two years ago about how the democratic world would come together, that those have been at least somewhat allayed, that we really have come together. We have even in some ways overperformed or outperformed at least, which is not to say we don't have a lot more to do and that we couldn't do a lot better. Well, I mean, we heard many presentations today about uh, open, resilient and responsive governments. And we also heard from the technology company side. Yeah. Do you think those views are compatible? Do we both understand both the public and private sector understand those three keywords in the same way? Or is it the potential threat that we understand it differently? I think that we understand them the same way, but sometimes we might be incentivized to twist those words in self-serving ways on both sides of that discussion. Um, you know, I, I think the, the thing that discussions like this for me emphasize, and this is, so, I'm just think, I, I'm, I don't have this as a canned speech, I'm kind of improvising as we go here. Um, so this is maybe a personal reflection. Uh, Which are always the best. One of the things that this whole discussion on the existential risk of AI has brought that's positive is it's actually forced people to identify on their common humanity. Because my, my personal view is I think the existential risk is perhaps a little exaggerated, but it's there and it's something we're talking about. It actually gives you a very different grounding for a conversation across public and private sector than your usual kind of, you know, let's talk about this or that regulatory point. Um, and I think we've seen a, a change in the tone of discussion around regulation, you know, which has really been this kind of, you know, let's lobby each other, let's sort of whack each other type discussion, which has now become a bit more collaborative. And that doesn't mean all the usual pressures aren't there. Um, but there's an additional layer that I think is really fruitful because it's now forcing us to ask, you know, what is the public and the common good that's, a, that's useful for enterprise but also ultimately serving the broader good that's coming out of these regulatory agreements? Um, Oh, uh, I yeah. agree. I mean, we have to pinpoint the common ground. So my worry is, and I have to ask this yeah. as the Deputy Secretary General for Business part, uh, you being here for the digital part, doesn't it only create more bureaucracy for the companies? Or am I overthinking it? No, you're not overthinking it. Um, I mean, this is a real challenge. Uh, and of course, you know, Estonians have their kind of, you know, ready-made, we'll, we'll pull out the can of, you know, let's digitize everything and make things simpler answers, and that's really important. Um, but one of the things that's true for bureaucracy for companies, it's true for bureaucracies for individual, is that the digitization doesn't solve things on its own. And this is what we've run into in Estonia, where we've gotten to is that once you've digitized things, you then have to ask, well, what's going on with the underlying business process? And you know, what we are now doing in Estonia is we are being forced by digitization to ask, well, how are we actually running our bureaucracy and what's the kind of the, the business logic of how government's functioning? How are we allocating resources? How could we do all of that better? So this is the same thing that's happened in digital transformation across enterprises, which is at some point you stop worrying about the technology or you, you get to a point where the technology isn't enough and you actually have to start changing how the business process functions as a whole. And I think that's the process we're also going through with how our democratic societies function, which is, you know, everything that's happened in the last decade in terms of the negative digital disruption of democracy is also forcing us to ask, well, how do, how do we make our democracies work? What's the kind of the core essence to an open society functioning? How do we maintain what's good? How do we improve on it? Um, and this is where I'll make a shameless plug for what's happening in the next couple of days, right? I think this year's Digital Summit's been a bit different because we're kicking off a multi-day democracy festival, if you will, in the form of the o Open Government Partnership Summit. So I know that many of you are staying all week. I'm really happy about that. And I'm hoping that the sort of the techno-optimism you have here carries into discussions that are going to have, um, well, I think here we're preaching to the choir at the Digital Summit. Not everyone's going to be so techno-optimistic in the next couple of days, so I hope that you kind of take some of that with you. Um, and maybe just to continue on what you'll take with you. Um, we have 
um, our, our organizing team, along with some partners from the eGovernance Academy, are writing up some of the ideas that we've heard today um, and that they'll be hearing in the next couple of days during the OGP Summit, and we'll be sharing that with you. So we'll also have a nice sort of written takeaway of some of these ideas, not just the happy thoughts we've left you with. I like being technologically optimistic. I like this. I think this is what Estonia are. I think this is what everyone in this room is. And now last question, and you have to respond very promptly and very shortly. Lucas, what about next year? Are we going to be back here for Dallin Digital Summit next year? Of course. Perfect. So uh, with this... <laughs> With this, I thank everyone uh, who have been with us. I thank people who have been following us online. Um, and a few last organizational remarks uh, up until next year, the last ones. Uh, so there is a separate uh, dinner with invitations. If you have been invited to dinner, there's going to be buses waiting for you if you leave the building on your left. And they're going to take you to the venue of the dinner. You can also walk there. Um, I know our city is a bit challenging at this point. Uh, but there are some uh, um, people who will be, di who will be directing you into the right direction of where the venue is so you can have a nice walk you can take the bus and for everyone else uh, there's also a reception downstairs uh, for about an hour uh, a nice cocktail reception and uh, this is it also on my behalf uh, I hope you've enjoyed our day I hope you've enjoyed our challenging uh, city uh, developing city as it is right now and uh, see you next year during the seventh Tallinn Digital Summit thank you